In this video, I'm going to help you understand closures in depth. Now, before we dive into the code on the screen, I'm going to define what a closure is. A closure is the combination of a function and the lexical environment within which that function was declared. Now, you might be wondering, wait, what? What even is a lexical environment? Before I explain you that, I'm going to keep the definition of closures displayed on the screen so that you could gradually keep checking the definition and understand the meaning behind it as I keep explaining you bit by bit. All right. So in this example, you can see I have a function named outer func, a new func variable. And after that, we are calling the function new func. So first of all, you can see that the variable new func is equal to the outer func function. And if you notice the parenthesis after outer func, then that means the new func variable is equal to whatever the outer func is returning. And that's because the outer func function is being called, which is denoted by the parenthesis present. So this means if we go to the contents of what's within the outer func function, we see that the outer func function has a name declared, a function display name, and a return statement that's returning the display name function. So this clearly means the outer func function is returning another function, which is nothing but the display name function. So when outer func function is being called down here, it is returning the display name function and that display name function is being assigned to the new func variable. So now it's pretty obvious that the variable new func is equal to the display name since display name is being returned by the outer func function. So that means in this line, the variable new func is storing a reference to the display name function that was returned from the outer func function. Pretty easy, right? Now in line number nine, we know that the variable new func is storing a reference to the display name function. So after that, when we go to the next line, we observe that the variable new func is getting called now. And we know that the variable new func has a reference to the display name function. So when we call the variable new func, we are basically calling, you guessed it right, the display name function because the new func variable was storing a reference to the display name function, which was returned from the outer func in the previous line. So when new func is called, it finally goes within the contents of display name and it console.logs out the name, which is explodivity. So now you might ask, and how is the console still able to print out the name as explodivity when new function is being called? And that is happening because of closure. Because the display name function which was assigned to new func still holds a reference to the name variable from where it was originally passed down from. The display name function is forming a closure because it is a combination of that function itself and the lexical environment within which it was declared. And the lexical environment of display name in this case is nothing but the contents of the outer func function, which in this case is the name variable. So since the display name is forming a closure and has access to its lexical environment, therefore, whenever new func is called, it will also have access to that name variable because calling new func calls the display name function, which has access to the name variable due to the concept of closure. So the specialty of this is in some programming languages, the local variables within a function exist for just the duration of that function's execution. Once outer func function finishes executing, you might expect that the name variable would no longer be accessible. However, because the code still works as expected, this is obviously not the case in JavaScript. So new func can be accessed anywhere and it will always have the access to the name variable because of closure. And that there, my friends, is all what closure is about. All right. So here I'll run you through another example just to get things more clearer for you. So here you can see there's this get some function and there's this variable add five. And then um, over here, we are just console logging everything out. So first, after the function, we have add five and add five is calling the get some function with an argument of five. So first of all, this function is going to execute. Right, this function is going to execute and it's going to take the argument of five. So this entire function is going to run and X is going to be mapped to five. So when this part runs, it's going to go within this function and it's going to return this function to get some with an argument of five. 
returns this function where x over here is nothing but 5 because of the lexical environment that I talked about. Since x is 5 over here because it's being passed from here, so this function which is being returned from get sum will always map that value of 5 from its lexical environment because this function is within this outer function. So this function can always access the contents within the outer function. So in this case, the outer function has the content of x and this function, wherever it goes, it will always have the reference to that value of x. So now get sum of 5 returns this function and here x is 5. So after that, add 5 becomes equal to nothing but this function, right? So when we in the end console log add 5 and we are calling add 5 function over here, passing it to in this line, add 5 is already equal to this function. So when add 5 of 2 is called over here, since add 5 is equal to this function at that time, 2 is going to be passed to y. And since x already has that reference to 5 that we had passed from over here, and 2 is going to be passed as an argument to this function, which is going to be y. So in the end, when we call add 5, it's going to execute this function and it's going to return x plus y and x is going to have the map value of 5 and y is going to have the value of 2 from over here and in the end it's going to return nothing but 7 and if we go to our console you can see the browser returns 7 all right so this is all about closures i hope you got to understand everything about it by these two examples that i showed you in depth so if you like the video don't forget to like and subscribe until then stay tuned for more